Amen. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> My daughter wants to do it now too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. I'm uh, thankful to see each and every one of you. It's awesome to uh, just to be here in fellowship with each, with everybody. It's it's beautiful and it's humbling and it's uh, it's just amazing. So. Um, you know, like I said prior, I, I feel very, very honored uh, to even to even be in this position, in in this in this uh, in this setting. Um, so it's it's a great honor for me, and um, but it's even a it's an even bigger honor the fact that that the Almighty has called us out. You know, out of the thousands, even just here in Grant County, you know, just to the few thousand people that are here, he called us out. So it's it's beautiful to see that that um, that idea that he's he's called us from from looking into darkness and seeing seeing the 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 things that we've done in the past and all the stuff that's happened and and he's he's brought us into something beautiful and opened our eyes and now un you know we can understand what what sin really is and and what what loving god is truly about so uh before we have a little worship and song and worship and in uh, the word we'll let's pray amen and ask father just to to be with us father we thank you we come before you we glorify you for shabbat for this day that you have set apart father we come before you thanking you for an, another opportunity to just, just to just breathe, another opportunity, Father, to to come into Your presence and just and just glorify Your name, because You said that if we diligently seek Your Word, if we diligently seek to do Your commands, Father, that You will bless us and that You will You will be in the midst of us. So, Father, we we come together as 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 a group, as a as a congregation, as a fellowship, as a as a gathering father to honor you to glorify you because of who you are and what you've done for us and for the things that you will do father because we know that you are the almighty you are you are you are great and powerful and awesome and wonderful and there is no one like you there is no 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 one person there is no one other mighty one out there that is greater than you are. So I thank you because we worship a, an awesome God. So we just give you praise. We ask that you you make this place holy, that you that you make us holy, that you forgive us of our sins, Father, that you forgive us of our trespasses and our, of, of our shortcomings, Father, and that you you bring those things, Father, to light that are not that are not right with you so that your word can prevail in our lives, so that we can see, Father, like you said, that you you test and you try our hearts, Father, so that we can know what's there, so that we can deal with those things. So I thank you, Father, for all of you, all of your blessings and corrections. In Yeshua's name, we glorify you. Amen and amen. Beautiful.
wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice how great
How great is our God, how great is the Almighty of all whom we serve. We thank you and praise you for all that you do, Father. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Father. We glorify you for who you are. Ah, we declare that you are mighty. We declare that you are wonderful. We declare, Father, that your word is truth. We declare that you are the, the, the King of kings, Father. Thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. Amen. He's awesome. <laughs> and this morning, a, a song that's been in my heart uh, is a, uh, it's a very, very simple song. And it simply says that that our God is great and mighty. That He is He is He He's strong and powerful and and He's clothed in majesty, He's clothed in, in sovereignty and kingship. And He's the one that deserves all of our praise, all of our honor, all the honor and all all the glory. Amen. So I invite you to sing this with me.
Amen. All right. All right. So with <laughs> Amen. Now, now it's hot in here. <laughs> and I, and that, <laughs> Amen. So, uh, yes, that was, uh, like I said, I, I woke up this, this morning and I had that song in my heart, just like, ah, oh man, I wanted to sing this and, uh, because it's very true. He's the God we serve is awesome. I mean, he opened, uh, he opened the Red Sea. He, he, he brought down the walls of Jericho. He, I mean, <laughs> even just those little things. And I mean, even going to, to each one of us, you know, he's taken us from, Amen. Uh, oh, amen. Uh, should have put a fan on before we started that song. <laughs> but um, amen. Uh, if you recite the Shema with me, and then we'll we'll get into a, into the Word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. The Shema Yisrael. Yehova Eloheinu, Yehova Echad. Hero Israel, Yehovah is our God, Yehovah is one. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity one more time just to be in your presence, to be in your, in your, in your midst. Father, we, we glorify you today because of who you are, Father, because you are awesome, you are wonderful, you are powerful, you are, you are all-knowing, you, um, you are everywhere at all times, so you see us, Father, no matter where we're at and no matter what we're doing, so I thank you for it, Father, I glorify you because you are the, the, the one true God, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of of life the sustainer and the giver of life father so we thank you for that we thank you for giving us your word and your word through yeshua father who was the word made flesh and we thank you for giving us father that that ability father to to read your word and to be able to to, to dive into you into your word and and, and and into the lives and see the lives of of the apostles and the and the, and the disciples as as they walked and talked through throughout everyday life and we thank you father that you've given us the words of yeshua even though there's we have such such a small volume of the gospels father we we know that there's so much more that he said and taught but we're thankful for what we have and we know father just like like yeshua told the apostles that the spirit the holy spirit you father that's going to dwell within us is going to going to show us those hidden things they're going to they're going to remind us of of your word and they're going to and, and and he's going to just come and just help us to walk out your word so father even if even though we don't have all the words that yeshua spoke even though we don't have all the the things that that he did we thank you that we have the same spirit that he was filled with when he was a man living on earth as flesh and blood, Father. And we have that same spirit that's going to help us and guide us and teach us and show us how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to walk, how we're supposed to, to treat each other, Father, and how we're supposed to love you. So we thank you, I ask that you open our hearts, our minds to receive your word, Father. Not, not my word, but your word. Father, I ask that you that you use me, Father, to speak your word, to, to accurately bring forth what's in, in your word, Father, and also that I don't mistranslate, that I don't, I, don't, I don't ever lead astray, Father, any person. I ask that you help, help each and every one of us, Father, to be on your right path, that you, that you Father, make us right when we're wrong, when we're, when we fail, Father, that you, 
you remind us that you're there and, and that your grace is there to, to help us. But that we don't live in grace, but we live in truth and we live in, in, in the fullness of your spirit. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. In Yeshua's name, amen. You may have your seats for a moment here while we... Amen. So... <coughs> As always, I always invite to uh, visit the website. Like I said, I'm always adding, adding new things and... Uh, if nothing else, every single week it's always being updated with the, the teaching. Um, uh, I try to trying to do a little more, uh, getting getting prior teachings, but just because they're the quality was really bad, um, <laughs> so trying to get those into into um, into the, the YouTube as well, and then even just putting little write ups and and things like that, getting those prepared. So. Um, hopefully soon that our website will have more than just uh, than just the videos but it'll have you know other other you know teachings that you can read because I know some people like to just read rather than than listen uh, I know like for for uh, for myself I can I, I can read a a, um, a book faster than than I can hear somebody read the book to me so <laughs> you know that's but that's again that's you know individual so I know you know those kind of things um, I do hope to put all those up but <coughs> uh, hopefully one day we'll get uh, also like the Facebook accounts and <laughs> and those kind of things to um, but you know I want well we need people to to manage those things because I can't do it all and I don't want to do it all um, <laughs> But, so, Acts chapter 14, we're going to jump into, into the Word. I am, uh, like I said, I'm really, really excited. I was, I was putting together the PowerPoints, and, and I was thinking, oh, it's, you know, we can, we can get through, the, through all, all of Acts chapter 14 in one day, and, and we get all this, and then after, after just putting the PowerPoints together, and just looking at the, the amount of, uh, the amount of information that I wanted to put in here, I was like, you know what? I don't know if we're going to get through all of chapter 14 in one shebang. Uh, and if I if we do, it will you know we'll be like last week and we'll spend two hours here. Um, <laughs> so, um, but it is so we're gonna I'm gonna split this up into two parts. So this is part one of chapter 14, and in total, it's actually part 30 within the Gospel of the Holy Spirit, and we'll titling this the gospel of the Holy Spirit because again just as um, I had mentioned in the very very beginning of this you know we look at the Acts uh, the book of Acts and it's usually titled subtitled kind of the Acts of the Apostles and we see that that Barnabas was not an apostle you know but he was an a, com a companion to to Shaul to Paul <coughs> And he was the one that gave credence, or gr gave uh, gave Paul even some credibility uh, to the uh, to the to the churches, to the congregations uh, that believed in Messiah, because they they were looking at Paul like, oh, you, you know, this guy wanted to kill us. He wanted to put us in jail, and <coughs> so because of Barnabas, a disciple, he was now Paul or Shaul now gave uh, was given. Uh, credence or given credibility I should say to to what he was teaching what he was preaching and uh, that he wasn't just a fake and then uh, and so we see that it's not the acts of the apostles because the apostles aren't the ones only ones doing anything we saw in Acts chapter 8 that that Stephen that Phil or Philip and and you know even Stephen in chapter 7 uh, you know and we can we can see throughout throughout the book of Acts that it's not just about the apostles. You know, for some reason it, it does kind of point, uh, you can see the main characters are like Peter and Paul. 
you know those are kind of like the the big characters within in the book of acts uh, from acts chapter pretty much chapter chapter 12 or 11 on it's kind of focused on paul but prior it's focused on peter in a sense uh, which is is not completely true but uh, for the most part, if you have a huge overview, you'll see Peter and Paul, which are which were apostles. But like I said, it's, they weren't the only ones doing things in the book of Acts. And they weren't, and everybody doing things weren't apostles. They were believers like you and I. So, beautiful. So in Acts chapter 14, verse 1, we'll start here. It says, and it came to pass in Iconium that they went together Oh, excuse me, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake. So it's, and it came to pass in Iconium. The way it, it reads here is we can, you can also read this in some translations, even say it like as it, as it was in Antioch, you know, the same thing that was going on there was going on here in Iconium. They, you know, they went at just like they did in Antioch in chapter 13. They went and they, they went into the synagogue and they preached and the same thing happened right here they're just instead of instead of saying okay now they went from here from Antioch to to Iconium now it's just like okay now in Iconium same thing happened they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed and I you notice I bolded a couple of words in there <coughs> and underlined a few things but uh for one, they're in Iconium. So this is one of those things where remember where they're at. <laughs> you know, because if you, if you can visualize where they're at, if you have a, a good map book, uh, then you get an idea of, okay, this is where they're at. This is what was going around in the region. This is the, the, the stuff that was happening in that region. What kind of, uh, what kind of religions were in that region? Uh, those kind of things. If you do a little study on those, uh, you can find some interesting some interesting information but you notice the first thing that they did w as soon as they go into the city they go to the synagogue and again just like in chapter 13 they went to the synagogue on the sabbath because synagogues don't run during the week <laughs> they take all they they have their their meetings on the sabbath uh, and then we see that when they spoke just like they did in antioch they spoke, and both the Jews and the Greeks believed. So in Antioch, it says the Jews, there were Jews that believed, and there were proselytes, or those who feared God. The proselyte is a convert to Judaism. Yeah, so there were converts that weren't born Jews, they weren't born Judeans, but they converted to Judaism, there were them there that were there, and there was also, like Paul states, those who fear God, those who fear Jehovah. So, and we see here, he went into the synagogue, and there's Greeks and Jews both in the synagogue. Yes, exactly. You know, of the circumcision is always dealing with the, the uh, Jewish religion. Not the not the Jews as you know as Judeans as as the tribe of Judah but as um, the religion, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna see that, and especially uh, not next week, but the week after when we dump, j dive into Acts chapter fifteen, we'll see that even more clear. Um, but you know, I probably spoiled all of Acts chapter fifteen from the past few weeks, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but we see that both the Jews and Greeks are in this synagogue. So obviously there was converts to Judaism in the synagogue, but for some reason this, this time they just call them Greeks rather than proselytes. And then it says, but the unbelieving Jews, in verse 2, stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. <laughs> so, unbelieving Jews, you can say, the way this is is put, the oh it says made their minds evil affected could basically be poisoned the minds of the brothers. Yeah, so they poison their mind. But you notice it says unbelieving Jews. So there's Jews 
both of the in verse one, both of the Jews and also the Greeks believed. There's Jews and then there's unbelieving Jews. Okay. So then there's a there's it's like how people say there's there's good Christians and then there's bad Christians. Okay, in these texts, <laughs> in, in these texts that you're talking about, you say how can you tell who is a Jew and who is a Greek? How can you tell? <coughs> from where they live. Most you know, for the most part, uh, from where they live or uh, from bloodline. Knowing who their family was. It, y like, uh, it's kind of like the whole idea of um, uh, how can you tell who's who's Mexican and who's Asian. Uh, there's a different, you know, for one, there's different facial features, uh, different accents, styles of talking. But also, even if you didn't know if, you know, if I was standing next to a... a uh, a Mexican, you know, born full-blooded uh, Mexican uh, from Mexico, not New Mexican. <laughs> you know, and you couldn't tell us the difference. Well, you'd have to actually look to our, see what our family lineage was. That's how you can tell. Yeah. Yeah, so it's Yeah, it it it's it's almost impossible, but I mean there's little distinctions like that that you can always put like facial, you know, uh, what they look like, you know. I mean obviously you can tell somebody that that lives in in uh, Africa compared to somebody who lives in in Poland because of skin color you know that's, that's a big for one that's usually a big uh, distinction Yeah, so that that's a huge difference. Uh, culture has changed tremendously from that's first century that's now. Like yeah, see, today it's almost impossible. Like it's really like hard. If you're led to to ask them where they're from, that you, you're, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you're doing it to make a distinction from, oh, you know, you're, oh, you're from there, and I'm from, you know, I'm better than you are, uh, oh kind of thing, then that's that's totally different. You know, then don't do that at all. Then you shouldn't be doing uh, asking those kind of questions if it's gonna, if you're trying to make a distinction or oh, I'm first class, you're second class citizen, kind of thing, or oh, you're not a you're not a full-blooded American. You're oh, you you just uh, immigrated over here. Oh, you're a second class. No, that's not right. Well, someone that just meet in the back. Well, I mean, there, there's no um, division in the population. Like there's no blood. Here, when we're talking about the times and how they made a distinction, is because back then there was a distinction. Yes. Yeah. 
No, not at all. Um, so so And see, not everybody from that's black is from Africa. Yeah, but the you know, they, there's, yeah, there's Cuban, there's Puerto Rican, there's, you can have uh, Asians, Asians, darker than dark. Yeah, I've actually seen, yeah. Yeah, he's, you know. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's a that's the thing with si ki skin with, no, with skin color. It's you can't say, oh, you're from, you're black, you're from Africa, you're white, you must be from um, from you must be a Jew kind of thing. Well, no. Yeah. There's a lot of the, the Mayan, and like even like Mayan, who are South American, they're dark, dark-skinned people, uh, and then they don't come from Africa at all. So, <laughs> yeah. See, so that's why you say you can't, even if even though you see a skin color, that doesn't didn't mean anything. <laughs> So, yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, there is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was really, yeah, yeah, that, oh, yeah, and, and seeing that's the one thing is, is, uh, unfortunately, Judaism, the uh, religion of the Jews has made it to where, you know, you have to marry only a Jew or somebody who converts to Judaism, but according to Torah, even according to the, to the law, of, uh, uh, in I believe it's in Deuteronomy when it talks about about marrying and things, he says don't go out to the other nations and, and get them because you what's going to happen is basically you're going to just like Solomon did, you're going to allow their traditions, their gods, their their worship to come into your home, and you're going to since you're now you know you marry you make that covenant of marriage, you're now one with that person so now their religion is now part of yours and he says don't do that but if somebody wants to you know if you go into another nation and and that person is like i want to be a part of your god like ruth like naomi um uh like uh, uh what's what was her name uh, and jericho uh sarah? no not sarah rahab. rahab you know where they're like you know your god is my god you know, and we're going to serve, I'm going to serve your God, then by all means, yeah, that's, that's very, very acceptable, even though they come from another nation. But they, yeah, they, they, they made it, they put the, the fence before the fence of the Torah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so that's where these man-made traditions and all those, these little rules and uh, all that come from, and, but it's, you can't find what they talk about in scripture. Uh, something similar, but not the same thing. <laughs> so, so they're in the synagogue. They're speaking to both Jews and Greeks, and they're and they're believing. But it says the unbelieving Jews. So, like I said, here you have different, a different uh, word attached to the Jews now, to the Judeans. It says, stirred up the Gentiles, making their minds evil afflicted, or um, how, I, how I said earlier, they're they poisoning the minds of the brothers. But it's not just that they just didn't believe what Paul and, and Barnabas were saying, what Shaul and, 
and Barnabas were sailing, saying, it goes a little deeper than that. Because if we look at that word, which is Strong's 544, unbelieving, it has this. From 545 to disbelief, willfully and perversely. So they're willfully disbelieving. They're perversely disbelieving. Not believe. Disobedient. Obey not. Unbelieving. And then the word that it comes from, 545, <coughs> is unpersuadable or disobedient. So we see that they weren't they weren't just unbelieving, like they didn't they didn't want to hear what they said, or they're just like, nah, that doesn't make any sense. I don't want nothing to do with that. But they were willfully disobedient to what Paul and Barnabas were bringing. But w were they disobedient too? Were they just disobedient to Paul and Barnabas? You know, were these guys? Uh, <coughs> bless you. <coughs> bless you. Uh, were they? W you know, are we supposed to? Like how many preachers preach today that you're supposed to to uh, uh <laughs> bless you. <laughs> 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 Did you hear that? But were they, you know, were they doing like how many pastors say that you 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 can't uh, you can't go against the authority of the you know the pastor or the apostle or the the, the evangelist you know. Or was it something else? What were they willfully disobedient to? If it's the same thing that they were doing in Acts 13, well, this is what Paul and Barnabas were teaching. Acts 13.44 says, In the next Sabbath they came the whole city together to hear the word of Yahweh, the word of God, the word of Elohim. So they weren't hearing Paul's words or his his little uh, midrashes or any of that stuff, they were hearing the word of the Almighty. <laughs> so they were getting the true word. And just like in Acts chapter 13, there were obviously people who were like, hey, you're messing with our religion. <laughs> you're messing with our traditions because you bring truth. Well, when truth meets your tradition and the truth goes against your tradition, well, it causes a stir and it causes a little rumble inside of you and people that are wanting to hold on to that tradition aren't going to be very happy. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, and that's, and that's one thing that we're going <laughs> to see the, they weren't. They weren't preaching. Uh, they weren't even preaching Christian doctrine. They weren't preaching the from the Book of Romans or the Book of Matthew, because <laughs> for one, they were not even written yet. Paul hadn't even written to the Romans yet, or written to Thessalonica or any of these guys yet. <laughs> so they were preaching the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Oh, we can stay there for a while. But we'll move on a little bit. <laughs> and, and let me take this back just a little bit here. So if we go to verse verse 2, when it says, The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, afflicted against the brethren. So now we know that they were they were unbelieving. They were wif willfully disobedient to the word of God. Well, they maybe, maybe it, it, they knew they weren't, they, uh, they Exactly, they didn't. They they yeah, they, they didn't want to believe the, the truth the actual words of the Almighty because their traditions, because what they had been taught, just like so many people who, who argue uh, preachings, you know, 
people will argue preaching they won't argue the word or they won't they won't uh, hold fast to the word but they hold fast to preachings from their pastor or their reverend or their you know rabbi and they don't actually study the word you know <laughs> so that's exactly what these guys did is how it says they made their minds they poisoned their minds because they're like oh wait a minute here they're, these guys are teaching truth but our traditions are more important our our way of doing things are more important than the word of god <laughs> so we see what they're disobedient to the word of god just like in acts 13 44. now acts 14 verse 3. So it says, long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in Yehovah, in the Lord. So they stayed there a long time and they're talking about the Almighty. See now, in Acts 13, it tells what Paul was talking about and his little sermon that he gave in the synagogue in a sense. Uh, but here it doesn't say it. It doesn't say what he spoke. It just says that he was there speaking boldly. And then it says, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So, <laughs> I bold this little phrase, the word of his grace. See, because in the King James, we read boldly in the Lord. They spoke boldly in the Lord. And, you know, you know, many Christians and things like that will look at that phrase and say, oh, well he's, it's always talking about Jesus. You know, it's talking about Messiah. Mm, but it's interesting that it says, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And we know that miracles, signs, wonders, all those kind of things come from Yehovah, come from the Father. So the word of his grace, but whose grace? If we see it in, here I have Yehovah. I should have just kept it as the Lord, as it says in King James. But whose grace, right? You, that's you, it's Yehovah's grace. But who gives grace? Does, does, as, does, the, the, does Jesus give grace as the Christians say? Does he, is he the one that gives grace? This is what he says. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So let me touch on this just real, real quick. Because this last little phrase, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands, before we jump into too much says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, we always focus on he shall give you another comforter all the time. You know, the, the, I, I was, you know, told in, in, in my previous denomination in uh, the Pentecostal style that the Holy Spirit is what we should seek after. The tongues of the Holy Spirit. But he says something interesting be in the very, very beginning of verse 16. He says, and. So it's, and I will pray the Father. So it's not just, I will pray the Father. But he says, and. So we have to look at the verse prior. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. So the prerequisite for actually getting the Holy Spirit, for getting the, the signs and miracles can, that can be done by your hands, is keeping my commandments. That's what Yeshua says. I mean, that's... And then if we, if we look in, in John uh, 14, and if we even look a little farther down, in it 
say verse 23, it says, Yeshua answered him, reading from the complete Jewish Bible, If someone loves me, he will, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Someone who does doesn't love me doesn't keep my words, and the word you are hearing is not my own, but that of the Father who sent me. So we know that if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, the co what commandments that, that Yeshua gave? Well, they're the same commandments that the Father gave, because that's what he said in verse 24. So he's speaking, Yeshua is speaking what the Father spoke. That's why he was the Word made flesh. So because of that, if you love Yeshua, if you love Yehovah, you're going to keep his commands. You're going to keep the law. And because of that, you will be given the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And you will prophesy. You will heal the sick. You will cleanse the lepers. You will do these things because you believe. Someone who believes is someone who's going to do. Faith is all about doing. It's one thing to say you have faith than to actually act on it. So, like I said, I wanted to point that out really quickly. But I want to deal with that, the whole idea of grace. The word of his grace. Like I said, whose grace? Who gives that grace? I let the Bible speak for itself. Psalms 84. Verse 11 says, For Jehovah God is a sun and shield. Jehovah will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Jehovah of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. <laughs> so, who gives grace? Right there. The Lord, Yehovah, will give grace and glory. And he will not even withhold anything good from you. I love it. He gives grace. He gives glory. He gives to the upright. Just like he did in the garden, he gave grace. He didn't kill them. He told them, if you eat from this tree, I, you're going to die. But instead of killing them, he clothed them, and he kicked them out. <laughs> he says, because if you stay here, I'm going to kill you. He gave grace to David. I mean, look at David. He went, had an adulterous relationship with a, a, an upright man and had a child. And instead of killing David... He's, the father says, okay, you know what? You repented, but you're going to have some issues in your household. He could have killed David. David should, according to Torah, he should have died. Torah was very much in effect. The law was very much in effect. David even had to write his own law, his own copy of the Torah for himself. So he knew it. He should have died, but he was given grace. He gave grace grace even to the Ninevites. If you know, people who are not even of the tribes of Israel. <laughs> yeah, you can take it that far as well. <laughs> he, I mean, he's so he he gives just like the psalm says. He will give grace and glory. I mean, he gives grace. He it you know throughout the Old Testament we find that he is gracious. He is merciful. He's loving. He, I mean, and yet for some reason we're taught in the Christian church that oh you know 
the God of the Old Testament was mean and evil and he wanted to just kill everything. He was, you know, psychopathic and, and delusional. I mean, those are the kind of pictures that are painted. If you, if you, I mean, look up, uh, uh, which what we're going to probably do uh, next, uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to deal with a little bit of uh, hermeneutics and because uh, we'll actually see that uh, a word that derives, we get the, the, one of the the root words for hermeneutics we actually can see that next uh, uh, next week but uh if you look at some of the how hermeneutics has played a part the the interpretation of scripture has played a part in in the bible and the different theologies that have come from those interpretations it's just like people have li they've literally just because of a few people a few um well-known and well-respected people have separated the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. Like if they're two different, completely different beings, you know, and uh, but we'll deal with that next week. Like I said, I, w I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, yeah, and then I also didn't want to uh, blow up too many sacred cows today at uh, one time. <laughs> no. But, um, <laughs> but he gives grace and then also in Proverbs 3 says for the froward is a is abomination to Yehovah but his secret is with the righteous the curse of Yehovah is in the house of the wicked what curse right because I mean so many people want to say the curse of the law or the curse of God well what curse well, Deuteronomy 28 numbers you know also tells us hey if you don't keep these laws that I'm giving you today, all these curses are going to come upon you. 28. Exactly. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. It tells you. You know, so the curse of Yahweh, that's the curse. Those are the curses. If you want to disobey, well, you go and disobey. But you're going to be cursed. That's why he's like, choose life, choose life all over the place. But he says, but he blessed the habitations of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly or unto the the meek the the humble <laughs> so he gives grace he gives grace yeah gives grace we had you know we did a teaching a uh, uh, couple weeks back uh, on the uh the great eighth day and uh, dealing with grace and things and uh that goes into a little more a little more detail if you want to check it out you're welcome to it's always there it's going to be there as long as uh as long as they don't decide to shut us down. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> right, then we just have to go old school and make CDs and that kind of stuff. But right? <laughs> but he gives grace. So we see Yehovah gives grace. And there's two witnesses right there. But just in case, you know, if you think that it's, well, you know, like how, like I said, you know, people have separated the New Testament and the Old Testament. And, you know, one's old, one's new. Oh, you know, we don't want the old. The old is, you know, it's like getting old socks or old, you know, old clothes. You don't want the old ones. You want new. So let's go with the new. Okay, well, so if you think the old is done away with, and, um, and this is like, ah, uh, you know what, that's, that's old stuff. That doesn't matter anymore. How about we look at somebody who walked and talked with the Messiah? Simon. Who was called Peter Kepha. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5. I encourage everybody to read First Peter. I think First Peter is one of the most uh, interesting uh, letters that he wrote. Um, I would... I would definitely re recommend reading for Peter because he he does a lot of um, a lot of good teaching to say to a new believer even. Um, yes, it's one of first Peter five two was first Peter day. Nice. Last day one. <laughs> good. So verse, 
verse 1 says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who, who am also an elder, <coughs> and this is, remember who Peter is talking, and a witness of the suffering of Messiah, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, or for money, for hire, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples, examples of the seven kingdoms to the flock, examples. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, that's why we can only have one shepherd, as Ecclesiastes tells us, one shepherd, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. So he's talking to elders. Yes, he has specific people he's telling us here, talking to here. So you can you can all look at this and say, okay, well, you know, Brother Jay, are you doing this? You know, <laughs> if you see me doing any of these things that he says not to do, <laughs> then point them out to me. <laughs> so verse four, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. Why? Because no one is greater than another. Not one, you know, like he says, you know, the eye can't say that the, the foot is, you know, I'm more important than the foot. And, you know, n nobody is more important. We all just have different roles to play. Yeah. So it gives a lot of hard times because you either have hard people to listen to or you have to learn ways to bless ways that the other people don't fall into the trap. Exactly. Like you were saying when you were looking at the hard times, you know, you fell for him, you learned and then you fell for him. Yeah, that's and uh, that's what I did. There's so many things. And and then the way I've I've uh, seen the Bible and and then looking at in the King, especially in the King James when it was written and stuff like that, you see it was a, it was a male chauvinist uh, culture that put this together. So that's another issue that you know you have throughout the scripture. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That's that's a good point. I love that. So and be clothed, be clothed with humility. Verse one, uh, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Hmm, that seems familiar, right? I mean, didn't Proverbs just finish saying that He gives grace to the humble? I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading into it. But verse six, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. <coughs> so he, remember he says I that he gives grace and glory and so he verse 7 is the word from the very beginning so humble yourself nice so he says that so humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he cares for you be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So you're not alone in this. But the God of all grace. Wow, so he's got all the grace. What do you know? So the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Messiah Yeshua, after that you have suffered a while. So you're going to suffer. Sorry for your luck. 
not going to be roses and 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 peach fuzz walking to you know <laughs> or what is it the the um balloons and puppies running around you all the time <laughs> God of all grace who has called us not just you remember who he's talking to here if you look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 he's talking to all those who are scattered abroad so he says who has called us unto his eternal glory by Messiah Yeshua after that you have suffered a while make you perfect Establish, strengthen, settle in you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So to who be glory? Yeah. The God of all grace. Who has worked through Yeshua, through his word made flesh. <laughs> it says to him be glory and dominion. But the God of all grace. So I find it beautiful that when we, when you see, uh, you know, people are wanting the whole idea of, of, oh, grace, you know, like in John, how it says grace and truth came, came uh, through Jesus Christ. Well, okay. When did he show up? Because also according to John, the same writer tells us that he was there before the world began. That his sacrifice was done before the world even began. And that he is the word made flesh. So if his if the word was God, just like John one one says, and grace and truth came by Yeshua Messiah, or Jesus Christ, how it says, and he is the word that was in the beginning, well then grace started at the beginning <laughs> it's very simple logic but for some reason people don't you know Christianity won't put those things together they won't teach that kind of stuff because then you have to actually pay attention to the first part of the book <laughs> and we've already established oh no you know you can't you can't put that together the, uh, that's why there's a blank page in the middle <laughs> you know that's why there's that 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 page that says New Testament. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a big page. <laughs> yeah. It's like a big page it's between the Old Testament and New Testament. You know, and, and it's a so separation. How, how would you define it? Uh, what would you define it as in the Bible terms? Oh, yeah, that, that was the 400 years of, of God's silence. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, you, I mean, you can't even... I mean, looking through Book of Acts, there's not even a day where God is silent. And yet he was silent for 400 years? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is why theo <laughs> Yeah, this is theologians love to make up stuff. <laughs> but all because they... they w <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and again, it all goes back to interpretation, the, the hermeneutical style... Uh, and uh, because if you, if they can convince you of, of a theology, then they have to adjust the Bible to their theology. You know, so they have to, they have to make the Bible fit their theology rather than fitting your theology into the Bible. And obviously most of the time, not 100% of the time, our theology usually doesn't fit in the Bible. You know, it's like getting a, a big round cake 
and sticking it into a square pan. It's just not going to work. Stuff, some stuff is going to fall off. <laughs> oh yeah, the square peg in a round hole. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell what I need. One. <laughs> so it's it's all about it's <laughs> it, it's all about making you conform to what they want you to believe. That's why most denominations are built on one verse of scripture. They have one or two verses that they'll point to and say, "So this is the scripture. That's that's your your main focus." And it's like, "Well, wait a minute here. I thought all scripture was given for inspiration, for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction." But only this one verse is like the, the center of it all, you know. So it's, uh, and that's how many, many doctrines work, many denominations, excuse me. That's the way they work, is they all focus down into one verse. See, and that's why, you, sh you know, we can't be looking at the word with those denominational glasses because many times they're like really, really thin and... <laughs> And they're a little distorted on the sides and the front, so you can't really see. Re you have to get really, really close. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, your those denominational glasses are are a bad are a bad thing. That's why we we thank God that we've taken them off. You know, and and that's one thing that I I plan to do more of is is teach more people how to take those off and to look at the scripture for what it is. Just like the whole idea right there. The God of all grace. So Yehovah has all the grace. So, first four, <laughs> chapter 14. Like I said, I, I knew we were going <laughs> to... <laughs> that's why I say almost an hour and we're only on verse four. So that's why I say I, I had purposely split this up. <laughs> Because of this. And that's that's why he simply said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commands." I mean, yeah. plain and simple. If you if you love me, you'll keep it. If you don't, well, hey, <laughs> you do just like you did with the father. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, amen. So verse four, but the multitude of the city was divided. So remember, we're in Iconium. They're at the at the synagogue, and there's Jews and Greeks in the synagogue. And verse four says, but the multitude of the city was divided. Divided from what? Paul and Barnabas' teachings of the Word of God compared to the unbelieving Judeans, the religious, we could even put that, that word in there, the religious ones. Uh, it says, and how part with the, and this I put in parentheses here, unbelieving Jews, not just Jews, because obviously we saw in verse, uh, in verse 2 that there were Jews and Greeks who believed, 
so with the unbelieving Jews and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. So they're getting ready to, they're getting ready to put a whooping on Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> I mean, they, they were going to kill them for preaching the word of God. <laughs> so they were aware of it. So they found out and fled unto Lystra, Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth around about. And there they preached the gospel. And <coughs> so it's interesting how they, they we're going to stop right here, but uh, it's interesting how we see that they, they fled from Iconium because they're going to be stoned. They're going to be stoned, and they're going to go into... They, they head to Lystra and Derby, and the and also it says and unto the region that lieth around about but what region doesn't tell us it, and it only even gives us a glimpse we only get a few verses in the next in the next uh, few verses of what happens in Lystra but we even get even smaller of what happens in Derby so it's very, very little, but what regions? And and I wanted to bring this up, this little uh, map up here so that you can see again. They're in Iconium where the little red arrow's at. And they go down to, the little south is Lystra, and Derby is more to the east. They flee because they're going to be stoned. And and this map shows like they just went to those two cities and went right, right back around. But it says, and the regions round about. So what regions did they go? You know, most most maps don't show you. Um, they don't show you any other place that they went to. I don't know. If see, there's. I don't know if you can see my mouse here, but when you see Lystra and Derby, I mean, they could have come anywhere from all this area here, you know, minus the little commentary, little boxes and, and things like that. Um, you know, like it, it, they could have literally come in any, any of those areas all in that, in that little area. Um, it's because it says they went to the regions roundabout. And what's really interesting is in Lystra and Derby, there's a person that comes out of here that we happen to see and who is really important and we'll, we'll, we'll meet him in Acts chapter 16 um, but uh, just to give you a little heads up <laughs> because I, I believe it's it's interesting how they they go here first you know these are one of the this is the first missionary trip in a sense that that Paul takes with Barnabas and for the first half of it with with uh, Mark all the way up to to Achilla or uh, Perga I'm sorry uh, right after Pamphylia and so, yeah, so Mark travels up to, from Pamphylia, Salmis, Cyprus, to Perga, and then he's like, you know what, I don't want more of this, and he takes back off to Jerusalem. But Paul and Shaul and Barnabas go to Iconium, they go to Antioch, Pisidia, in Pisidia, excuse me, Lystra, Derby, and in Lystra and Derby, there is a, a man known as Timoth, or a, I should say a boy named Timotheus. That becomes a, dis a disciple. So he was a he was a kid, obviously he was a he was a young man at the time, and he was better known as Timothy, who Paul later writes first and Tim first and second Timothy two, where he tells him, "You're my beloved son." So Paul even kind of adopts Timothy as a as a spiritual uh, spiritual son. He takes care of Timothy, so that's why uh, the letters of first and Timothy first second second Timothy excuse me are considered like pastoral epistles because he's teaching Timothy how to how to con uh, conduct himself how to how to do things within the congregation how to deal with situations and how to how to how to how to be in a sense a pastor even though he doesn't actually use the word pastor in any one of those uh, the letters that he wrote we get a glimpse of how it is to be a leader 
in one of the congregations that uh, that Timothy is is overseeing. And so I, I think it's really beautiful that here they go into the the synagogue in, in Antioch and the synagogue in Iconium. And obviously they went to the synagogue in Lystra and Derby because that's what they were, you know, ob- the you see that's the the um, the path they take basically. That's that's the norm for them. <laughs> so they go into those places and they they make a disciple who Paul is like, this is my son. He's like my son. So I think it's beautiful. Um, so I just can I just couldn't overlook that. Um, but next week we will get into uh, what happens in Lystra and a little bit of the beginnings of hermeneutics. We'll do with a little bit of hermeneutics next uh, next week. So uh, I I know it'll be a blessing for you. It was, it was really it's really excited for me to put it put it all together. Um, and at the same time, um, I know it'll be a refresher for most of us. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but it will be it will be interesting. You'll see some things that that uh, theology uses certain words that they use it in this way, but according to the Bible the meaning is totally different. It's a completely different way. So it's kind of interesting. Well, um, uh, I don't want to spoil everything, but so I'll give you an opportunity to give your tithes and offering, anything, uh, any giving, and then any requests for prayer, questions, or comments uh, before we dismiss. And like I said, I'd, this time I didn't want to keep you guys for for two hours, so that's why I <laughs> broke this up into two parts. <laughs> so (laughs) but uh uh, so i do want to give you give you an opportunity for uh prayer um And that's and that's. Uh, I, I don't know if she has problems with what kind of power she has, mm-hmm. but she says that to her, she wants to see her dad come to Jesus that day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and uh, what's your cousin's name? Jean. Jean. So let's, well, let's pray, and then uh, if you actually put your hands on him, um, and we'll pray. Amen. Father, we come before your presence. We thank you for today. We thank you for Shabbat. We thank you for your your grace. We thank you for your word, and we thank you, Father, for showing us that because of keeping your commands, Father, that that your spirit is available to us, that we will be filled with your spirit, Father. So right now, Father, we ask and we bring before you Jean Sitawanda's cousin, Father, that you touch her body, that you also, Father, touch her mouth so that she doesn't speak these words that are that, that bring condemnation upon herself, Father, but that she that she learned to speak life and to speak ab- abundance and prosperity and, and, and joy and help and peace in her life, Father, even if, even if she's not feeling it, Father, because we know that we live in two, in two worlds. We live in two kingdoms, and one is spiritual and one is natural. And, Father, we know that the natural, n- n- it never agrees with the spiritual. Father, our natural mind can't comprehend the spiritual things. So, but Father, I ask that you help Jean to understand that her words are powerful, and that you 
touch her body, that you bless her, Father, that you take care of her, that you watch over her, that you show her, Father, that, that you're with her. And Father, we ask that you bless Josiah, that you heal his body right now, that you remove anything that is contrary in his, in his, in his, in his body to, to your perfect will. I ask, Father, that you remove the, the virus or the, 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 the things, the cells that are attacking, that want to attack his body, that are attacking his body, that you remove them in Yeshua's name now. That he is made whole, that he is made perfect, that those things that are, that are wanting to come against him, that are wanting to stop him from receiving your blessings, be removed, taken out of the way now in Yeshua's name. I command sickness, I command infirmity, I command all all works of the enemy to cease right now. And Father, I also pray for each and every one of us here that you that you guard us, that you protect us, Father. You are our shield and our salvation. Father, help us because in this time, in this season that we're in right now, Father, we know that there's so many things that, that go around. There's, there's, there's people that are uh, purporting all kinds of uh, religious things, Father, that have nothing to do with your word. And, and they're trying to do it in the name, in your name. So I ask, Father, that you guard us, that you protect us from those things and that you help us, Father, that we don't, that we don't stumble, that we don't fall. I ask you, Father, that you also protect our bodies, that you you, you send your angels, Father, to, to guard us from those viruses, those those diseases, those those things, Father, that want to go through the air, that 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 wanna get on us, Father, to to bring us down, to incapacitate our bodies, Father, to so that we can't so that we don't worship you, that we don't so we don't pray, so that we don't we don't celebrate the sabbath father i rebuke those things so that we will father be healthy that we will be prosperous that we will have the 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 knowledge and the wisdom father to speak your truth to to every single person that will listen so i glorify you i give you all the honor all the glory all the praise because you are worthy you are mighty you are wonderful you are awesome you are glorious, Father. So we call upon you, Yehovah, for healing, for strength, for guidance. Yevarechecha Yehovah vayishmarecha. Yair Yehovah panavelecha vichunecha. Yisa Yehovah panavelecha veesemlecha shalom. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you. Yehovah just... Lift your countenance upon each and every person and give them peace. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Shabbat shalom.